we are now recording um, wet felting with, I want to thank Bridget this morning at 11 o'clock. She took on this class because we had one teacher who signed up to do this and then decided she wouldn't be able to do it. I got a second teacher. She was all in, but she had a family emergency this morning and let me know she wasn't going to be able to do it. So Bridget, thank you so much for jumping in at the last minute. I have it on the best of authority. She's great at teaching this as she is with anything. Thank you very much. We're going to have fun. We're going to play with wet soap and felt. So here we are. Uh, so I like this book right here and you'll be, I'll be working with the felt cam. So I might get things misaligned, but there we are. This is Chad Alice Hagen is the author. It's called Felt Making, Fabulous Wearables, Jewelry and Home Accents. It's about a 2002 book. I like it very much. I basically learned how to do this from the book. Put that aside. I have another book here that's slightly hilarious. Um, oh. <laughs> I, I have not crafted with cat hair. It's called Crafting with Cat Hair, Cute Handicrafts to Make with Your Cat. Um, and amongst them are felting. So I haven't actually worked from it, but I think it's completely hilarious. Um, just some examples of other felting that can be done. This is a my Mongolian boot and it's made, the fabric is felt. And then they assemble the boot and do this beautiful embroidery. I wear these at Christmas because they're my Christmas boots. Throw it offside. Here is a Felted hat, purple, of course, if it's mine, it's purple. And what they've done on this to make it round is it's knit, it's been knitted and they knit it really big. And then when they felt it, it shrinks down and they shrink it down over a hard head form. So it forms like a head and it's got a little curl up, uh, not the, br the brim, the brim kind of curls up. So, and this is mohair, it's super soft, it's super delicious. This is a felted piece it has a unicorn on it. Hey, Lynette. Oh no, it's I actually, it's a carousel horse. This is a uh, needle felting, which we are not doing today. Specifically needle felting takes, um, let me unlock this sucker. Needle felting takes a base of felt and then you apply different um, cutouts of a different color felt and then uses needles, these little bitty, needles to jab into jab 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 and they have a backing on it usually a, a foam or a, or a big brush that they jab into uh, to cause the fibers of the top cutout piece to push into the fibers of the base piece and lock it in it also softens the edges of the cutout piece um, so you don't get really sharp edges but it molds the two pieces into one and, and rather critically, you don't wanna mix wet felting with this dry needle felting because the needles here will rust and that's super bad. So the first process is what we're doing today, which is the wet felting to make your base. And then the second process, if you so choose, is let me lock it for safety, is to needle felt and, and add detail. Um, speaking of felt, let me see if I can hold this up so you can see it. This is a sheet of quote felt from Michaels or some such. And even though it says felt, which we think of as wool, it's 100% acetate. So you wanna be careful if you're gonna do something that if you really need it to be felt and have all the properties of felt, make sure it's sheep's wool or, or any animal wool um, before you try to felt with it. This is a work in progress. I've done the felting for it. It's a long uh, panel of felt. And so, and then I have braided roving and felted that. So it's stuck together. These braids are stuck together into flats. And the, what I'm going to be doing with this is fold it, fold it twice. Okay. So that makes a little pouch in here. And then on the edges, I will sew the strap into the base. Can you see the base? I will sew that in and sew the other end into this side, making the structure of the pouch. 
And then on the outside here, this is my castle and the river and the river is gonna flow out to the ocean. And there's mountains here and these are rocks and sheep on the hillsides. And I can highlight all of this with hand done embroidery and needle felting, I can add beads and such. And my idea is this side inside is the mine because inside the castle, there's a diamond mine. So I'm gonna have diamonds in here. So this is sort of a pouch with story to it. There you go, off stage. So Bridget? Yes. When you say don't mix needle felting with wet felting, you mean when the, fet is, the felt is still wet? Correct, correct. You want to have do. your piece completely dry before you put the needle through it, the needles of which will rust if they get wet. Thank you for clarifying. So today, what we are doing today is we are going to felt with a plastic bag. So hoping that you have obtained somehow a plastic Ziploc. This is about a 10 by 10, so one gallon. And here are some samples of previous classes of what we've made, just blooping together colors. This is all one color, but it's very soft. And this is where the pieces didn't quite get felted because they're kind of falling apart, but it's a little thick. Here's another one, just adding a couple of pieces of blue. And this one here, the felt is still in the Ziploc bag after it's been dried out. So in preparation, what, what makes felting work, uh, felting's been done for, they've documented over um, 6,500 years, but probably earlier than that, for as long as we've been herding sheep around. The sheep fiber has little tiny scales on it, little microscopic scales. And when you get the fiber wet, those scales sort of open up. They become like little hooks. And the key is to do felting, you need the sheep wool. You need to get it wet with wet, uh, I'm sorry, hot water, and then add a little bit of soap. Soap helps uh, the, the fibers stick together or not stick together, I'm sorry, become slickery and then agitate. So we got water, wet, hot water, soap and agitation. And after a little bit of that, the fibers start to tangle and lock together. And they lock together such that when it dries out, you can't unlock them. Like that sweater that you liked really bad and you threw it in the washer and hot and it came out looking like a Barbie sweater, it's not gonna be undone. Once something is felted, it's felted forever. So our process today will use bubble wrap, a piece of bubble wrap. What also can be used, which I, actually like better than bubble wrap, but we'll use bubble wrap, is this um, non-slip or non-skid that you put in your dishes, in your dish cupboard, so that the dishes don't bang against each other. There's, I have a couple of different, I guess you could call them grits or sizes of it, but this will aid in the agitation. I will be using this heather colored wool the wool is best if it comes from a roving. Roving is wool that's been washed and uh, combed and left in this long, thin strip. The, strip. the strip is usually wound onto a ball and that's how you buy it is in these balls. They're also known as bumps, we call them bumps. So here's our, pro oh, and we need our soap. We are using literally Soap for my own shower, just as simple as that. You don't have to spend extra money. Um, I like it when it smells nice. And so this is, uh, hold up, sorry, turn it. Yardley hmm. lavender. So you can just literally just use any kind of soap. What I've done here is taken half a cup of water, heated it up and then shaved off about, I'd say a, a, a pecan size piece of soap from a bar of soap into the water and heated it up. And then when it cooled out, it uh, turned into this funky gel. When we're ready to apply the hot water to our process, I'll go into the kitchen and pop this mixture into the microwave. But what you need to do is get a half a cup of water, a pecan sized piece of soap. Now, if you're, if you're following along, put it in the microwave till it's hot, hot, hot. Um, 
I'd say boiling, but not crazy. And then, and then stir it up and use your spoon to kind of jam the, squish the um, soap so it dissolves and have it ready to go. So do that now and it will be ready and softened by the time you're going to need it. So now we will prepare. We're going to make these items here, the, the basic sheet of felt. So we need to have a structure. Now our structure is going to be three layers, three layers horizontal. Let me start off first layer horizontal, second layer vertical, and third layer horizontal. And I will explain thusly. Question Bridget. Ma'am. You say a sheet of felt. How yes. did you achieve a sheet of felt? That's what we're about to do. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. So you were showing us a finished product. This is a finished sheet of felt. Okay. And then thank you. Once we have our three layers of horizontal, vertical, horizontal, and I'll explain what that is, then you can put design pieces on it. So to make our sheet of felt, winding off of our bump of roving, or if you have just globules of felt, kind of stretch them out to make one, two, three. Oh, I have already three. One, two, three horizontal stripes. And it's okay, it kind of overlaps. It's fine for right now. You're just sort of measuring it out. One, two, three. And I can tear off the rest of these without involving the rest of them. Um, need to keep in my keep in view. I'm my own cameraman here. All right, so there's my other three. So placing them, and I'm placing them on the sheet so that I know the approximate size that I'm going to be needing. So one, two, three, horizontal. One, two, and if it's too narrow. Open it up. This craft is very, very, very forgiving. This is not, this is not the British baking show where you're gonna have 130 ounces of this and 125 of that. This is very forgiving. So you don't need exact measurements on a lot of it. The basic craft is, is very basic, but I do want, that's my vertical. I did my horizontal. Now I know that need another horizontal. I'm gonna, what I'm doing is in spinning, I would be drafting the roving to fluff it out. There's vertical, fluff it out. So it covers all of it because you're making a sheet. You want it all the way covered. One, two, and three. So there we are, we're all covered. Now I want to add my detail because I want to make a picture. I want it because you know I had a picture here. Not really a picture, but just design. You can make it any any design you want. This is the fun design part of the craft. We set that aside. This is the perfect place to use, um, if you're a spinner, for you to use up some of the bits and ends of spinning yarn and wool that you have. So pulling on this, I'm going to use just a bit. So this is the design part. This is the fun part. And you can actually make pictures or have it be in particular colors. You know, neon. Oops, blue. I'll put some blue in here. Put a little worm. Uh, I want this thing, whatever this is, I want this there. Great use of the wool when you know that it's no good for spinning anymore. Instead of throwing it out, just put it in the wool box and when you're ready to do some, or put it in the felting box and then when you're ready to felt, it's gonna be there for you. This is a completely random art project. One other color I want in here. I think I want this blue. There. 
There we go. So, ooh, we can also use, okay, put this stuff away. This is a totally kid tested uh, craft as well. Um, other than the hot water, which shouldn't be any hotter than warm to your hand. It shouldn't be boiling by the time you work with it. Um, there's, there's nothing that's gonna hurt a little kid and there's a lot of activity, physical activity with rolling your little wool burrito out. Um, this wool yarn is fat spun yarn used in like knitting, if you have big knitting. And remember that everything here needs to be 100% wool. Don't be fooled. Look at the um, fiber content to make sure it's not at acrylic or acetate or something crazy. But you can take a, a little thread and just add it in. I'm sorry, interrupting. You said 100% wool. 100% wool. You mean any natural fiber? 100% um, wool. Animal fiber. What else could it be? Oh, it could be cashmere. It could be yes. Uh, it it could be sheep's wool. It could be any other animal. Nope. It should be an animal. And right. apparently, it can be cat. And apparently, <laughs> yes, cat. Yes. Can you hear cat. That? All right. I'm. I just wanted to open this up a little bit. I'm going to add that one there, and I'm just placing it and making it fit that ten inch place. Okay, so putting away my little threads here. Boop. All right, it's now and and kind of curl under the edges. Am I in frame? Oh, golly. There we go. Curl under the edges, make sure it fits the 10 inch. And now here's the magic trick part. We need to slide it in very carefully, not changing any of the structure. I'm, I'm just kind of tamping it down, hoping it sort of holds together to to slide it in, like like putting the pillow in the pillowcase <laughs> before the pillow is a pillow. I'm gonna flip this so we don't have that label there. I have a really odd question while you're doing that. Speak. And maybe you'll talk about this later. If I made like four of these yes. and I wanted to attach them to make a bigger square, is that something possible? Absolutely. Felt the edges together. In fact, I have a plan for a pouch and a pouch strap. So remind me later because I can demo that. Super. You can you. you can super easy just um, stitch them together or felt them while they're still felt. You don't want to wait till they're I'm sorry, felt them while they're still wool. If you felt them, it's hard to get felt to felt to felt. Felt to felt to felt. That didn't make, that made sense. Once it's felted, I really wouldn't be able to get these two to go together. They've, it's already done its felting. So either I'm gonna hand stitch it. Um, Could you needle felt them best. together? I'm sorry? Could you needle felt them together? Uh, oh. Yes, you could. Yes, you could. It might not be as structurally fabulous as if you stitched it, however, just an FYI. All right, I have slid my work inside more or less safely. Let me put this guy back in here. And I want it to be kind of square. Notice how some of these pieces are, are, rounded, on, are rounded and rounded. This is where I was a little sloppy and didn't make a nice make it go into the edge all the way. So I'm gonna to try to be diligent about having the wool go out to the edge all the way. The wool will lose about 40% of its size. Ooh. I can demo that by just laying the, well, maybe not. won't lose all that much. These were all done on one gallon bags. So it loses, they'll lose some of the size. All right, I am happy with that right there. The next step in my process is the wet. Ready for the wet? Yeah. All right, the wet part is my bowl of soap and water. So I'm gonna go to my, my microwave and heat this up. Talk amongst yourselves, ask questions. 
And you guys are all welcome to unmute yourself. There's not that many of us. As long as you don't have any background noise, feel free to unmute yourself so you can ask her questions as she goes along. Stop. Hello? I stay muted because I have cats. I understand completely, yes. <laughs> and I'm battling one right now. She wants to, doesn't want me to be on the phone. Oh, dear. I have a friend whose cat has taken up um, um, chewing on the, the um, earphone cords. Hmm. So every time she's trying to do uh, online teaching, she has to try to find the online cord that's not been chewed to pieces. What's strange is this one never bothers me for the most part till I get on the phone for something like this, that she hears it talking and she sees me watching. Yeah. Mommy, there's people. Where are they? I want to be part of it. Back. Back. How many people are on the class right now? Uh, right now there's um, four of us. Okay, because it took me a little while to figure out where the link was. Oh dear. Uh, and somebody just asked to be let in. Hello, Kimberly. Hello, Kimberly. Are you here now? Nope. She's still connecting. This is my first time as host, so I'm still learning how to be host. And Hello, Kimberly. Bridget has again? started. Bridget has started the class. Showed us how to pack the uh, the wool into the bag and is about to show us how to um, do the felting itself. Did you bring stuff to work along with us, Kimberly? No, I'm just going to be following along. Thank you. Sure, you're welcome. Um, everybody else here is following along too. It's kind of that kind of night. Apparently it's cold almost everywhere. <laughs> We're expecting more rain and snow and I'm in Las Cruces, New Mexico. Wow. And we've had snow on the ground for two days now. Well, today would be the third day, oh. which is very rare. Yeah. I don't think of snow when I think of New Mexico. Saturday, it was lo uh, Saturday or Sunday. Sunday, it was 11 degrees outside. Wow. That's really cold. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm here in Southern California, so it's all fine and lovely here, but wow. Now our winds have started picking up. I've never seen, the weather is just so crazy. Yeah, it's, it's really insane right now. Um, we have friends in Texas without power and Bridget, we've got one more person. Kimberly has joined us. Hello, Kimberly. She's also just watching. Hi. And I told people if they wanted, they could unmute since we have so few. Yes. In case they have questions. Ask your random questions. So I want to make sure I'm in frame. This is the fun part. It's the super exciting, as exciting as it gets. <laughs> so as I'm pouring in, I want to make sure that the nice sheet that I have laid out doesn't get misaligned, that, that my my design details don't go walking around. And this is this, the tough part, but we'll get there. I'm doing this literally in my living room. <laughs> Bridget, do you have two cameras on yourself? I do, isn't that fun? I have I have the loom cam or the uh, 
This yeah. is the felting cam, and then hi, my regular cam. I I've logged on with a separate laptop and account, which is how I do that. So I've logged it, everything in. I'm zipping it almost all the way up till there's just a little bit left. I'm going to try to get out as much of the air as I can. And the water, the water was boiling. It's cooled off just a bit so that I can touch this and not scream. Again, this is an important safety tip for anybody, including when you're working with kids, you don't want anybody burned, but you don't need it to be, you know, crazy hot. About how much water did you put in? Uh, half a cup. Half a cup of water. That's all that you need. And right now I'm smooshing it to make sure that all the different sections get water. I'm going to flip it over and smoosh some more. I want all the little bits to have water. And it may turn out that I may need to add more. So hold that thought. Hold that thought. Talk amongst yourselves. it up just a touch. Add a little bit of water. And how did you determine you needed more water? Um, because after pressing down on everything, pressing, pressing, I still have this whole section that's dry and this whole section that's dry. So the, the felt has soaked up the water and, and isn't sharing it with the entire piece. So now I'm Pressing, pressing the water into all the corners. I don't yet have all of the air out, but that's okay. I'll get to that point. I can still see there's dry over here. Huh. I'm turning it to try to get the, the water all the way down here, because that's the whole point, is it? <laughs> but you don't want it sopping, so soaking, sopping. And I can see the bubbles from the soap. I also note that these are kind of laid over on each other. So I'm going to pull them out a little bit because I do want that full sheet. So I'm, I'm pulling it out so it fits into Remember I said about the corners, I want it to fit into the corners. These two corners look like the wools come almost out to the edge, but I want to pull a little bit so that it fills this top part too. Just need to check have you here. tried doing this with a two gallon Ziploc? I have not. Hmm. However, I did it um, instead of a two gallon Ziploc to do the pouch that I was showing you earlier, I laid out a um, big sheet of plastic. It was uh, um, trash bag plastic and then rolled that up with the plastic and the bubble wrap and made a big burrito, like a Tootsie Roll. The end I twisty twisted up and then wrote a towel around it and, and it took a, it took a, a village. We took a while for all of us to do it. Community project. I'll make sure all these bits are wet. I flip it over. Ooh, look, that's very arty. Very arty. All right. I do believe that I like how all of this is wet. Closing water, because that's where chaos happens. I'm going to do the removal of the water in a couple of passes, or the air, because the air's got to come out. So I don't want to scooch out any of the water, but I want the air pretty much mostly out that I can get out. Okay, so now it's really flat. So here it is, flat. Okay, here we go. Now here is bubble wrap. And if you've been on Amazon.com for the last year, you have a lot of bubble wrap. <laughs> True. Um, I am going to lay out my towel first, and this is just a hand towel, then the bubble wrap, and now it's time for the felt burrito. I'm rolling um, the bag from the bottom of the bag towards the zip part, and it's just a matter of, let me move it up just a touch, just a matter of rolling, rolling like a burrito. It's a jelly roll. 
a jelly roll. Better, better term, much better term. Thank you. And I'm gonna get to here and see, eh, there's a little air. I could get rid of that air. So gently opening, because I don't want the water to come out. Just want, ooh, water came out, woohoo. Come back in, come back in water, come back in. There we go, come on baby, back in. Zip it back up. Extra towel on hand, smart girl. It's like you've done this before or something. No, <laughs> I haven't done it in a while, but <laughs> it's been a couple years. Um, all the way up. Now, this is where we get comfy and we can tell stories because I set my timer for, we'll say 15 minutes. It's now, so five till. So my job here is rolling. And what I'm doing is I'm agitating causing this to agitate and rub together. What exactly does the bubble wrap do for you there? The bubble wrap provides um, the bumpiness of a bubble of the bubble roll so that it's um, as, as this material would, as the dish material would. Same, same deal that it's making the felt kind of rub on each other, even though it's oh. within the plastic bag. That makes sense? Yes. My um, my all time favorite felting video. It was um, a exhibit of the nomads of the Eurasian steppes. Oh um, my gosh! Yeah. The Mongols had these huge felt yurts that yep. I mean whole families lived in. Yep. And they they're uh, horse people, and they would ride to somewhere, set up a camp for a while, ride somewhere else, set up a camp. The way they did the felt was they take a big piece of canvas, lay it on the ground, cover it with um, the wool roving, just all over it, get it wet, make the jelly roll of the canvas and the felt with a pole in the middle. In the middle, right. And then tie, tie it with a rope, yeah. Tie it closed and then tie the two protruding ends of the pole to the back of their horse. So as they're riding along, this thing's rolling and bumping and getting agitated and thumped on and all of that. And when they get done, they roll it out and they have this beautiful, huge piece of felt ready to make a yurt out of. One solid piece. Isn't that yes. amazing? Yes. How they came up with that and came up with the, the, the method, I just love it. Well, felting certainly predates any kind of spinning weaving process because you know, they find bits of felt from the goats and put it in their shoe or yeah. the bottom and it made a nice little felt in the bottom of whatever shoe they had or, yeah, predates, definitely predates spinning. What felting have other folks done before this? What felting have you done or have you seen? I've done it on a ball. A pole? Ball, B-A-L-L. -L. Oh, yeah. Like, like my soap, my felted soap. Um, I made a hat. Cool. Whoa. And you bounce the ball. We bounce the balls. It was just Brilliant. Uh, bizarre. Really? Cool. But it shaped the, the hat really nice into a form for your head. Sure. And, the, and the ball is very, uh, I think she said it cost us five, her $5 a ball. And then she just deflates them. Sure. It's a rubber and it has ridges on it. And it was about the size of a the red balls that used to kick around in PE class. Sure, yeah. Yeah. Dodgeball. Cool. Yeah. Let me and shudder then you for a cut moment. The, um, you cut the felt in half or what? No, you 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 don't close one end of it. So oh. you keep, it's like I'm gonna take a look. I'm testing it. I'm gonna test it. Whoop. Already it's shrunk. This way, yes. sorry, in frame. It's already shrunk this way. 
Hmm. Let's open it up and see if it started to felt. And it has, it started to felt. How exciting. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. Very good. Now I'm rotating at 90 degrees and I'm going to felt it that way for a little while. Oh, okay. Hmm. Mm. Um, you can felt around, um, when you felt around a piece of, uh, or, or around a bar of soap, you don't need to add the soap. <laughs> it <laughs> provides its I, own soap. I've seen that and I've got all the stuff to do it. I just haven't done it yet. I just think it'd be such a fun project. Oh my gosh, yes. And then for camping, it's perfect because there's your washcloth <laughs> and your soap all in one. You just take that camping and it's your washcloth and soap. Um, you can also make snakes by just felting that way with no bubble, just on bubble wrap, just rolly rolly or felt balls. <laughs> balls. Um, here, here's a thought. What if looking around for a bag what if before i felt it i must have dealt it no 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 don't do that those are bad jokes <laughs> what if i took a piece of plastic and put that piece of plastic between two pre-felted panels okay here's here's an idea i've stopped everything just to show you this so that Pretend before you felt it, you put a piece of plastic in there. Mm -hmm. And then you take the edges pre-felting, curl it up, curl it up, curl it up, curl it up all the way, but all three edges, but not the last one. Then you put it in the bag and felt it, take out the bag and you have a pouch because these edges will felt together. Pouch. Nice. Pouch. Your brain just went boom. It's yeah. Yes. That answers my question nicely. Yes. Can you do more than two layers like that, or would you run out of? I I would think it would be too, uh, too thick. Yeah, I don't know. Give thick. it a shot. Let's try it. That's a, yeah. This, like I said, this is a very forgiving sport. <laughs> There's a <laughs> lot you can try and and do, and allows you to do a lot. Now, Therese used to teach a class where I think she took a really thin scarf, Ooh. laid the wool out on that, Yes. made the jelly roll, and then did what you're doing now. Uh, there's Chad Alice has a picture of that. I'm going to stop everything because it is so flippin' cool. It's a beautiful picture of it in here. So let's see if I can properly present this. So this is an airy fairy scarf where you just lay the pieces loosely and then jelly roll them up. Does that make sense? Mm. With something in between? Nope. There, it's, it's open weave. Okay. Just, just set the, set the strings like a, like a roving. See how she's, uh, there we go. She's kind of stretching out uh, the roving and then just laying them out in a zigzag one way and then zigzag the other way. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yep. There you you go. could weave it also. Yeah. Yes. Oh my heavens, yes. Oh, that'd be cool. Loosely. That'd be then cooler. you'd be sure it would stay. Dude. All right, let's see. That was a, another five minutes, about another five minutes. Let's open it up, get in a frame. Ooh, notice how it's it's uh, gotten smaller. It's it's banked. You know, I'm showing how it's shrunk up a little bit here. It's shrunk up this way. Okay, let's see. Let's see. I'm very excited. It is oh, now wow. a yeah. filtered panel, and for, and it and it's got these ridges in it, and those are awesome. So you um, all want to kind of. Um, stretch them out and maybe even block it mm. to make sure that it's a little bit. And at this point, it's still very malleable. 
And if I wanted to change cool. the design, well, no, I shouldn't fuss with that. I should, I should, this is the design, stay with it. I could make sure that it's a square. There's a little fudging I can do at this point while it's still wet. What fun. All right, you guys, that's it. I felt it. Woohoo! Woo <laughs> nice. And that was 10 minutes. That was 10 minutes of rolling, not 15. Uh, yeah. Five right. one way and five the other. And if it's not sticking down, well, that little loop that's right there, I'll catch that in the needle felting and pop it down the needle felting. There we go. Mm. How long right. does it take to that's, dry? That's what I got, you guys. That's as easy as it gets. Questions? How long will that take to dry? A while. I would put it out in the hot sunshine, if you have hot sunshine, for at least a day. Um, perhaps oven on you know 100 degrees on a cookie sheet, uh, or not a cookie sheet, a rack. Um, then it'll smell mm. like wet sheep in your whole house. But, <laughs> Uh, very uh, low, low, low temp in the oven if you're um, snowed in at this point. But there we go. I want to see what you've done. Try it. I want to see. Show me pictures. I'm well, you just gave you just gave me an idea because I a friend just gave me a bag of brown wool and I wasn't going to spin it up, and because I didn't buy it and it was given to me, it's all clean and ready to go. That's really nice. You gave me a really good idea. Yeah, yeah. You can do it. You can do it. We can go back to Tell us your view. pouch. What's that? Your pouch. Did you want the to see castle? the pouch? The castle pouch. Did yeah, you, want you to said remind you to show us the pouch. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see. Did I not? Maybe we. I'll show you again. showed it to us before everyone got here. Oh heavens! Okay. And also the books. Okay, I need to go around the other side of the couch because I threw them there. <laughs> I like the idea that it's in a Ziploc bag and you didn't have a lot of water. Yes, it's very easily contained. I mean, literally, I, this is my couch over here. I wouldn't, and my 65 year old hardwood floor is right below. I didn't want to, you know, I don't want to mess that up. The, the water was completely contained. I've taped plastic bags on this desk and the whole thing is completely contained. I will move this out second there and put the other towel down so this is a pouch project that i did it's not completed yet but i did the felting of it there's the back side there's the front side um this is the the castle the river that goes past the castle and the rocks and the sheep out in the fields the river goes into the sea foam ocean and these are the <laughs> mountains. And so this is a pouch. So to make the pouch, it's a threefold, one, two. And so this is the flap for the pouch. Okay, and I can do some kind of a, um, a button or something here to hold the pouch closed. And inside here, I'm gonna, uh, and on the surface, I'm gonna embroider in needle felt more detail to highlight what these pieces are because I had to tell you what they are, but when I get done, this will look like a sheep and that'll look like a castle. And inside here is the diamond mine. So it's brown and greens because I'm going to put diamonds in here. And then to make the straps, because it's a shoulder pouch, I took three different colors of roving, braided them together, and then flat felted them um, using the big Tootsie Roll method, like, like the burrito, like this. Uh, jelly Roll, sorry, Jelly Roll, just with uh, plastic, <laughs> trash bag plastic rolling it up in a, I, I did it in a big spiral and then the jelly roll from there. So I spiraled it around a tube and then put the bubble wrap and the towel around the outside and jelly rolled it from there. And what I'll be doing with this is I'll sew the sides here and the other side of the pouch. Am I still in frame here? And then this is the flap going over the front. I'm going to reinforce um, both the inside with with um, with plain fabric, plain light lightweight canvas, just so things don't you know fall out. I'll probably put a felt backing onto the strap just to give it a little more structure. But this will be a pouch. 
and then let me have you see the books that I have. This is Chad Alice Hagen. Um, she started in the 70s doing felting. This book was written in 2002. And it really takes you from the history and how the structure of the fiber works and the little scales on the outside of, the, of each of the fibers of, of wool and how they work and how the felting process operates has great pictures. I learned how to felt from this book. It's an awesome book. And look, it's in the book. There we go. It's exactly what we did. Um, the, the other <laughs> felting book I have is Crafting with Cat Hair. Um, <laughs> and, and I love the fact that this lovely little little ginger, t ginger cat is looking at the cat puppet made with her fur. That's, I just love that. And it's, it's really cute things to do. A lot of needle felting um, with cat fur which can be done. I've also worked with, uh, felted with dog wool. Um, right now I'm spinning dog wool and I have yarn and I'm gonna warp up my big loom, the big eight harness loom back there. I'm gonna weave it into a shawl, uh, uh, scarves, two scarves. That's not felting though. So there we are. What else did I need to show y'all? Is that it, is that it? Questions? No questions. My work we here have one person who just requested a link from me, mm -hmm. who I think is a, about to show up. <laughs> so I don't know if you want to talk this over again when she gets here or what. We could certainly walk it, walk her through it. Well, you're yeah. very clear with your instructions and um, the overhead cam. How did you mount that? Uh, I can absolutely show you how I did that. It's a stool. Oh. Um, I got this, this mount arrangement from Amazon. It's, it's meant to go on to a chair. And um, then this, all these are adjustments so I can, I can turn you know, it whatever way I need to turn it. And then this is a upside down stool that's sitting on a very small, let me see if I can show it, end yeah. table. <laughs> so kind of easy bake. Yeah. Um, and it's just right here in my, I mean, welcome to my living room. And it's here on my desk and my side desk that I just set it up, put, put the plastic down. So that's how I did the loom cam. And I have a, so this is my primary computer. My, this is a laptop and I'm using the laptop to be the extra account because I haven't yet figured out how to log on with two cameras in the same account. So uh, I've heard it's possible. I just haven't done it yet. And that's the loom room back there with the looms and spinning wheels and such. It's a little chaotic, but because is that great fun. wheels that I see back there? Two great wheels. Yeah, I have two vintage great walking wheels and I do school demos and show, you know, shows show off spinning and weaving to people all the time. Um, eight harness floor loom, 28 inch wide, five inkle card weaving looms, uh, tabletop loom and a lot of wool, a lot of wool. No. Other people have a dining room. I have a loom room. <laughs> yeah, I was given my master bedroom the thought of turning that into the uh, the loom and weaving room and yes. taking the office and sleeping in the office. Yes. My bedroom is the smallest room in this house. My the master bedroom is the crap room, the craft room. Sorry, craft room. Yeah. <laughs> so we have what's important to us. Yeah, you know, doesn't matter Craft. Where I sleep. <laughs> Crafting. Crafting is more important. And I'm the well, only one I'm, here, so that's fine. I was talking to my friend who has a, if you go on Etsy, she has Quill and Fiber Arts. <gasps> yes. yes. And uh, we're talking today, we live in the same town, and uh, of the different, oh, I lost my train of thought. Huh. Well, anyways, she's she's producing yarns and stuff for Punch, and we've been getting together, and I told her I need a bigger space at my house. I need to keep one bedroom for guests, but then the other two, you know, are oh, you yeah. really entertaining like you used to? Right. No. no. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yep. Well, Bliss I like it. I like. I see Blissot. Blissot has joined us, and she was there earlier. So this, I think we can call this the official end. I might chat with uh, Blissot later on, um, but. 
If you have no further questions, Lily, thank you, Susan, and oh, Kimberly. Thank you. It was great. Thank really you for it. Very good. I'm, I'm still available on Facebook, Bridget Lucia McKenzie on Facebook. I'm in the Fiber area. If you have more questions or want to learn other stuff, just ring me up. I'm here. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, thank Bridget. You, Bridget. Thank you. Gotcha. All right, ladies. Thank you. I believe so. Thank you.